Hi everyone, let's run through all my scenarios, including potential trading setups, starting on the macro with the bearish scenario, where this is a wave one, two, three, four, five, followed by a W, then a three wave in X and expecting a three wave in Y. Usually the minimum target for wave X is hitting the 0 0.382, which is sitting at 29.6K, which we haven't hit just yet, but we did hit a resistance area, which is the high time frame range value area low. Also, we have the support resistance area over here that we've touched. So this could be a potential reversal area for then a short trade entering over here, stop loss somewhere above and then trading it to the downside with a minimum target of 12.6K for wave Y. Now, what I don't necessarily like about this scenario is that this wave four is so short compared to wave two. Usually a wave four is longer in time compared to wave two, but in this scenario, that is not the case. So that is definitely something to take into account. If we then go to the more bullish scenario, which on the macro is probably my preferred scenario, this is a wave one, two, three, four, five. And now wave four is a lot longer, looks a lot better, especially compared to this wave two. Wave two bounced on the golden pocket. It's the COVID low, but I just call it a wave two. And then we have a nice move to the upside for three and then a W, X, Y, X, Z in wave four, ending at the 0 0.5 FIP taken from the low of two to the high of three, which is a common target for a wave four and also the maximum target for a wave four. And this was in confluence over here. The low was made exactly in the week that hit the 0 0.618 FIP time taken from the low of two to the high of three. And we also had a nice volume spike at the lows of wave four, which can signal a reversal area as it did with the low of wave two over here as well. So that is something to take into account. If we then look to the upside for the targets of this potential wave five over here, because we then expect an impulsive move with a trading setup of entering in some sort of a retracement with the long stop loss below wave four, trading it to the upside. The most common target area is between 98k and 174k, which is basically the 1.236 and the 1.618 pulled from the all time high to the low of 4. And the more rare target is the yellow box over here between the all time high and 98k. If we then go to the high time frame, which for me is the daily time frame for a little bit more detail of, in this case, the bearish scenario and then the bullish scenario, we have here the W. X, Y with inside this X over here and expanding flat, which is an ABC wave B hit its target area perfectly. As you can see, the 1.38 and the 1.236 perfect bounce in this area for then a one, two, three, four, five waves moves to the upside. In this scenario, wave five most common target is the 1.236 and the 1.618 pulled from the high of three to the low of wave four. You can also see again, the high time frame range value area low, very well respected with a couple of days we touched it, but we did not close any daily candles above it. Important to note is that those 0.382 over here is once again on the chart, which is pulled from the all time high to the low of W and usually is a minimum target for a wave X sitting at 29.6 K, which is exactly the same level as this 1.618. And again, we have the support resistance area here as well. However, we are of course in a wave five target area, which is the 1.236 and the 1.618. So we don't necessarily have to hit this area for then, you know, before we move to the downside and have a reversal. Uh, but it is something to again, take into account for this potential short setup we're entering inside this area is something I've mentioned for a while. And then stop loss somewhere safely above trading it to the downside. Now the stop loss is all the way up here for this potential trading setup at the moment, better be safe than sorry. 34K is the maximum target in this most common wave C target box. And wave five usually should not hit this area because wave three is already extended, which makes it very, very unlikely that this wave five is going to be extended. So if wave five is going to reach these prices right now, or if we are not going to at least come down, but instead keep continuing to the upside and hit these prices, it's very unlikely. This is a wave five and it might be a one, two, one, two, and then eventually a three to the upside. If we then look at the more bullish scenario that I have, we have a WXYXZ over here in the correction of this wave four Z hitting the rare target for a wave Z to 0 0.618. And now price is moving to the upside in an impulsive structure, which then is a one, two, three, four. And again, wave five ending somewhere here with the one again, high time frame range value area low 
acting as nice resistance as well as this range support resistance area quite an interesting area for the potential short setup over here and then the difference with the WXY is that with a short setup over here, you're not trading it all the way to the downside for a wave Y with targets of like 13 to 9K. But in this scenario, the most common targets for wave two are between the 0 0.5 FIB and the 0 0.786 FIB, which is basically between 21.1K and 17.7K with rare targets being the 0 0.382 sitting at 22.7K and the 0 0.886. Now from these more common targets, the by far most common target is the golden pocket area. The green lines over here basically between 19.6k and 19.1k which is in confluence with the low over here for maybe a little bit of a liquidity grab over here price coming down, liquidity grab and then going to the upside for the potential long setup. Stop loss below wave Z and then trading it to the upside with as mentioned targets of 100k. If we then go to the medium time frame scenarios, I have two for you. The first one is the very bullish scenario. And the very bullish scenario basically means that we have a one, two. So again, the, or the high time frame one over here is finished. We have a high time frame two that is already finished. And then we have another one, two, one, two before then an explosive three to the upside. Now in this scenario, there's a couple of things I don't really like at the moment. Uh, first of all, we look at this blue wave one and the blue wave two. The blue wave two at the moment finds support at the 0 0.382 FIB, as you can see, once and twice now. But this is a rare target for a wave two and not a common target. As mentioned, the common targets are between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.786. Also, if this is wave one and this is a wave two, First of all, wave two tends to be a zigzag, which is a 535 structure and also deeper. But at the moment, this looks very corrective, more like a WXY type of structure. Um, and also wave two is really starting to take very, very long compared to wave one. So you see a couple of FIP times on the chart. These are pulled from the low of two to the high of wave one. And then you compare wave one in time to wave two in time. And as you can see in this scenario, wave two is already taking basically like 1.618 times the time it took for wave one to form, which is really long for wave two. So this scenario is becoming less and less likely the more we start to range. If we then go to the bullish and the bearish scenario, it's basically the exact same trading setup. That is why I basically mix the bullish and the bearish scenario in one uh, scenario over here, because in both scenarios, this is a five wave move. It, either it's a C or a wave one, that doesn't matter. The target area is exactly the same, the 1.236 and the 1.618 pulled from the high of 3 to the low of 4, high time frame range value area low, support resistance area, it's all the same. The only difference is the length of the potential trading setup. So with this setup, one enters trades inside this area for the potential short trade, stop loss safely above, moving, uh, trading it to the downside. And then the, the difference is, is this a wave two with targets between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.786 to close the trade? Or is this a wave Y going all the way to like 12, 10K, for example? That's the only difference. And the only way to know uh, which one is going to be most likely is how price is going to come down. Uh, but of course, we have very, very little information. So we have to wait and see. If we then go to the lower time frames and actually look what has been going on over the past couple of days, we can see that over here I have a five wave count already in one, two, three, four, five. So the high of five was made during the news event over here. Beautiful trade as well, by the way. And then the high time frame range value area low was touched for the first time for then the potential short area I showed at that moment in time. Then we have another over here, one, two, and then another one, two, before we now expect an impulsive move to the downside. This scenario is not necessarily my preferred scenario, uh, but it is still an alternative and likely scenario because over here, the ending diagonal of a wave five is not looking very clean. And also wave two retraced to the 0 0.886, which is a rare target for a wave two and not a common target for a wave two. Um, and then we have this wave one over here that is very difficult to count as an impulsive wave, uh, to be honest, because it's not a leading diagonal because wave five is too long. If this is a one, two, three, four, five, wave five is longer than wave three, which is not allowed. But if this is an impulse, then wave three is too short. So yeah, it's not very clean, but in this scenario, it is then a one, then we have a two, 
And then another like one, two, one, two, three, or at least some sort of an impulsive structure over here with this move being a three and now hanging around in a four. You can see I got the 0 0.5 Fib on the chart. Once we start uh, closing like candles, 15, 30, one hour candles above this level, that is the moment that this as a way four becomes less likely. But at the moment, as you can see on the one hour chart, this is actually very well respected and there is a potential for more downside to come. If we then look at the very bullish scenario, as I've just actually mentioned, the one, two, one, two, you can see in this wave two, we're then looking for a WXY. This has to be the end of this wave two because it's taking so long. We want to see an impulsive structure to the upside, but at the moment, it does not look very good for this scenario as price is well, moving to the downside here, at least on the lower time frames. And if we move down once more, and basically we would then move this wave to even lower, but also it takes even longer. It's just not something I like to see. Then we look at this scenario over here, where in this scenario, wave five ended at this high and we have an expanded flat in the W followed by an X. And then we have here a more corrective structure in the wave Y. This then is together a wave A, followed by an A, B, C in a wave B, and then eventually a C down. This creates an expanding flat, which is an A, B, C. Now in this scenario, you can see that wave B over here and then a expanding flat inside the blue wave B. So we have a three wave A, three wave B, and then eventually a wave C. Hit the target area for wave B perfectly. However, there's a little problem I have with this scenario, and that is that it's very difficult to count a very clean three wave structure in this structure over here. If this is some sort of a zigzag, then if this is an A, B, and then a C, wave C is too long compared to this wave A, it's more likely to be a one, two, three. And then we're now like four, five, basically. Um, so yeah, not necessarily uh, too confident about this scenario. Uh, we could wick below this wave B, wick below and then move to the upside to potentially have still like uh, the opportunity to have this scenario on the chart. But at the moment, this structure over here looks a bit impulsive and I'll go uh, into other scenarios that could have this as an impulsive structure in a second. And then over here, the other scenario that we've actually been looking for for a while then is then this being a expanded flat W, again X, and then this is a three wave in wave Y with the most common target area for wave Y being between the 1.236 and the 1 to 1. Now in this scenario, I had a potential trading setup, which literally was only possible if this was going to become a swing failure pattern trade, meaning that we have a double bottom over here with this low and this low. So we had a double bottom and the only way this trading setup was valid is if we go below the liquidity, we take the double bottom. So we go below, close above and then trading it to the upside. The entry is the moment basically with this potential trading setup, also based on Elliott waves and of course other knowledge of technical analysis. The entry is wicking below and the moment it closes above, that is your entry, which happened over here. And then you could potentially trade it to the upside for a bigger wave B. So by now, of course, if entries were here, stop loss is a break even and either it might be a break even trade or it might be a very nice winner or take some profit in between and it's always going to be a winner but in this scenario what we are then looking for including with the uh, potential trading setup is this to be a three wave in a bigger a followed then by a b in a three wave and then a move c however once again if this is a three wave structure looking at the impulsive structure over here means that this has to be very likely some sort of an impulse as well but it's not really looking like an impulse as mentioned if this is a wave one or a wave a it needs to be an impulse but it's quite difficult to look at this as an impulsive structure so yeah it's quite interesting what price is going to do today are we going to continue to the upside or are we going to continue to the downside because if we zoom in just a little bit more um yeah this looks to be let's go to the 30 actually and put the volume on as well so over here you can see lots of volume during the move down and if this is a five wave structure as mentioned if this is an a b and then a move c then yes c is first of all too long compared to a wave a um, it's also too deep it's it's too it's not only too long in time it's also too deep compared to a wave a like it goes past all the targets for wave a so actually it's a little bit more likely this is some sort of a one two three four five wave type of uh, structure um, but 
if this is a five-way structure and you still want to have the um, potential to then move to the upside, this has to be some sort of a three-way structure and then the WXY scenario. So in the Y, this needs to be some sort of a five, three, five structure. Most common target in this five, three, five structure, like a zigzag, is between the one and the 1.236. So then you would expect a move to the upside once we hit these targets over here. So basically that would mean if we would wick below this area. So you wick below and then you start moving to the upside. There is however a little bit of a problem that I at least like to mention. And that is that there's not too much great support down here. Yes, we have a little bit of a range over here which can act as support. You can see that the low of this range is exactly in between the 1 and the 1.236. However, at the same time, the first like proper support area like target box as you can see is the blue one here at the bottom between 24,850 and 24,377. So that is quite a deep dive to the downside. So if we start moving beyond this area, it's much more likely that the bearish, very bearish scenario over here of this becoming an impulsive structure to the downside is going to be more likely than the more ranging scenarios mentioned in this video. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. I'd like to thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you at the next one. Bye bye.